everyone, welcome back. So Christmas is quickly approaching and when I think of a true Trini Christmas, I always seem to think of sorrel and fruitcake. So in today's video, I'm going to share a recipe for a sorrel fruitcake. And this quick and easy method of making fruitcake is actually my mom's version. So thank you mommy for sharing your recipe with us. Before I get any further into the recipe, let me just wish you all season's greetings. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas, have a great time with family, friends and loved ones. Make sure you stay safe, no drinking and driving, eat lots of food. You can check out my playlist, it's called Trini Christmas is the Best, where you'll find a lot of Trini recipes. I'll have it linked right here in the upper right hand corner for you all, so go check that out. All your Christmas dishes, make sure you share them with me on Instagram, Facebook and my email. I would love to see them. So if you all want to see this sorrel fruitcake recipe, keep watching. So I'm going to run you through the list of ingredients you'll need to make the black cake, rum cake or fruit cake. So over here I have my fruits. I have some mixed peel or just mixed fruits. I have some rehydrated sorrel. This is just the sorrel sepals. I steeped the sorrel, some dried sorrel actually. I steeped it, took that liquid out, made a nice syrup that we're actually going to be adding to this cake since it is a sorrel infused cake. So I took the rehydrated sepals or the flesh from the sorrel and this is what I'm going to be using as part of my fruit mixture. I also have some cherries, this is optional. I have some raisins, some currants, currants are actually just a smaller version of raisins. And I have some pitted prunes. So just click the down bar below and you will see everything written out with the correct measurements. You can also add nuts to this recipe. You can add some pecans, some walnuts, almonds, any type of nut that you like, you can add it to the recipe. I have some butter, you want this butter to be softened at room temperature. Some eggs, some white sugar. You'll also need some brown sugar and I'm gonna get to that later where we'll be making the browning that we're gonna add to give that nice dark color. I also have some baking powder, some cinnamon and some nutmeg, some flour. I'm gonna use some orange zest, some lime zest some almond extract, lemon extract, some mixed essence or you can use vanilla essence or vanilla extract. I'm gonna do a dash of bitters, this is optional as well. And for any black cake, you need cherry brandy. So I just have this local Trini cherry brandy here. You can find them on Amazon, I think. I actually looked it up and I saw some. Walmart has them, so you can go look for this cherry brandy. Um, it has 14% alcohol in it. And I like to use a spiced rum, so I'm using Captain Morgan. You can use any type of dark rum or white rum. You can use white oak. I know a lot of people use white oak, Johnny Walker. Anything you want to add to it, you can add whatever type of alcohol you like to add. So the heat is off, but I'm just going to add all my fruits to the pot. Make sure you have a good size pot. I just love all the colors. I love how colorful it looks. And if you um, wanted to, you could chop off the fruits before adding it to save yourself a step because I like to add it to the blender and just pulse it so that it gets chunky. So now I'm going to add this cherry brandy and I'm just going to add about half of the bottle. And now you want to turn your heat on and just let that come up to a boil. So as soon as the fruits start to boil in that brandy, you want to turn it off. So at this point, what you can do is just let it cool down a little bit and then add the alcohol. And the main part of this fruitcake is the sorrel. So I made this sorrel syrup and this is what I'll be adding to this mixture. And it's just a really concentrated version of, of sorrel drink. So you can actually use this syrup, like a tablespoon of the syrup, add it to a glass of water and you can make your own sorrel drink. So I will put up a video on how to do this sorrel syrup or sorrel pulp or sorrel concentrate. So that's where we'll get that rich sorrel flavor from the actual sorrel sepals as well as this concentrate. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of the rum. And you don't have to use the whole bottle of the rum on the fruit. You can save it to soak the cake with after. I try to add a little less rum in the mixture itself. I prefer to just soak the cake with more alcohol. So I like to soak the cake like every day for a week. 
and it really gets nice and moist how I like it. So what I like to do is just leave this fruit mixture to cool down. When it comes to room temperature, I'm gonna put it into the blender and I'm gonna just pulse it until it becomes chunky. You don't want it to become like a puree or a paste, unless if that's how you like it. If you like it like a puree or a paste, then you can definitely go ahead and just blend it completely until it gets really pureed. But I like it chunky, so I'm just gonna pulse it, let it become chunky. If you want to chop it before adding it to the pot then you can go right ahead and do that too so i'm just gonna cover it down and if you want it you can do this the night before and just cover it leave it on your stove and when you wake up in the morning all those fruits are gonna soak up all the flavors of the cherry brandy the sorrel and the rum so you can do that as well but since this is a very quick recipe then just leave it for like you know about half an hour let it cool down and then you can blend your fruit mixture so i'm gonna make the browning now to a dry pan Add the sugar and you just want this to caramelize and on the side put up about a cup of water to boil because we're just going to use about a half cup of water in this so I have it on about medium high heat and you'll notice it's already starting to melt so just make sure you spread it out evenly in the pot So at this point you want to keep stirring so you want it to brown evenly so you'll notice a nice caramel color is starting to form and then it's gonna get darker so that's what we're looking for okay so it's nearly at the stage where we want it to be so you have to keep turning and be careful because this could burn you really bad and you want to have your half cup of water on standby okay so now go ahead and add your water and turn the stove off and be very careful when you're adding that water because it could pitch up and burn you really bad so you see that's the lovely dark brown color that you're looking for so just let this sit and come to room temperature and it'll thicken up a little bit more so don't be too worried um, so when it's cool then we could add it to the cake mixture so to my mixing bowl I'm gonna add some butter this is butter that's softened at room temperature To the butter I'm gonna add the sugar and I'm just gonna let that cream until it's nice and fluffy. The next thing I'm gonna do is start adding my eggs one at a time. So you can do this in a separate bowl if you want, I just like to crack it straight in there. Just be careful because you don't want to get any shells in there. So I'm gonna have it on low speed while it mixes in with the egg. And then as that first egg gets combined completely, then I'll add the second and then I'll continue until I've finished adding all. So once the egg is combined with the butter and the sugar, now I'm gonna work on the dry ingredients. So to the flour, I'm adding some baking powder and some cinnamon. I'm also gonna grate some nutmeg. And you can omit this if you don't like the taste of nutmeg. Now I'm just gonna mix that to combine everything. And you can add any types of spices you want to add to this. You can even add a dash of salt, but I use salted butter, so I don't need any extra salt. So now I'm going to add my dry mixture to that wet mixture. And I'm just going to add half for now. I'm going to mix it and then I'll add the rest. Now I'm going to add a little bit of almond extract. You can use almond essence, but remember the extract is more concentrated. So if you're using this, you're going to use less than you would if you're using the essence. I'm also adding a little bit of lemon extract. And we'll also use the zest of a lime and an orange. I'm adding a dash of Angostura bitters. Some of this mixed essence, I got this in the Kalaloo box. I'm just gonna go in with a good amount. I just love the taste of this essence. I'm also gonna grate in the zest of piece of this orange. I'm also gonna zest this lime as well. And you're just gonna mix that to combine everything. That smells so wonderful, like I could smell the extracts as well as the essence and I also get that citrusy scent from the orange and the lime. Now I'm gonna add that homemade browning that I made so I'm just gonna add half of it and mix it in and then I will see if I like the color and maybe I'll add more. 
Now that looks amazing. It looks kind of like a chocolate batter. So I have my fruits here and what I did was I put it into the blender and I pulsed it about five times just to get it nice and chunky. You don't want it pureed unless if that's how you like it. So I let it come to room temperature and then I put it into the blender. You don't want to put it in there hot. It's just going to make a whole mess because the steam is going to cause your blender to explode. So all you want to do is just blend it up to the consistency you want and then you can add it to your batter. So to my cake batter, I'm going to go in with about four pot spoons of this fruit mixture. And I can really smell the sorrel in there. I could tell this cake is going to come out amazing. And I don't know about you all, but I like my cake with royal fruits. So I like to put real fruits, like about four cups of fruits in there because I like a real rich fruitcake. So I'm just gonna let this mix. I'll see how it looks and then maybe I'll add some more fruits. So it's looking good and smelling good but I still feel it need a little more fruits. So I'm gonna add one more. Actually, let's do two more. You can never have too much fruits in a fruitcake. And the more fruit you add, the richer the cake is going to be and the more moist it's going to be. So I think I'm kind of high because that thing smells real intoxicating. I think I'm high just by sniffing it. I'm not a very tolerant person to alcohol. If I sniff alcohol or just drink a little bit, I tend to get tipsy very quick. But I have to have plenty alcohol and rum cake. So the fruitcake mixture is ready now and I forgot to mention one thing. If you wanted to make this cake non-alcoholic, what my aunt does is she uses some malta or some Welch's grape juice. So you can use the Welch's grape juice to soak the cake when it's finished. You can also use pear drax as well. I will do a video next on how to make a non-alcoholic fruitcake so look out for that one. So I have my baking tins ready and I got these at the dollar store and look how gorgeous they are. They had like all different patterns. So these are the covers for it. They all have festive designs so I just loved it. I figured it would be perfect to put the black cakes in because I'm going to be giving out most of these as gifts. So fruit cakes or black cakes or rum cakes, they're the perfect gifts to give for Christmas. So all I did inside the pan, I cut a piece of wax paper and I just oiled it. You can put some butter and some flour. I just put some oil and then I put some on top of the wax paper so it stays at the bottom. So I just took the paper, put it over and kind of stenciled out the size of it. So this mixture will make a five pound cake or even smaller cakes if you want. And I have my oven preheating at 250 degrees Fahrenheit because these have to bake kind of low and slow. So now that I've filled up my baking tins, I'm going to put them into the oven and they're going to bake for about two hours. So you have to be kind of patient. After that two hours, you can go in with a skewer or a toothpick and check to make sure that it comes out clean. So the cakes came out the oven and I let it bake for two complete hours. So I just let it come to room temperature. So over here I have a mixture of cherry brandy as well as this spiced rum. You can use any type of rum you want to soak the cake with. So I also added some of that sorrel concentrate in there. That's what's going to give it the unique sorrel flavor that we want in the cake. So I'm just going to spoon it onto the cake. And what I like doing is soaking it every day for about 5 days. So I like to make my cakes about a few days before Christmas and every day I soak it so that it gets that nice strong alcohol flavor. It depends on how you like it. If you like it strong then that's how you do it. But if you wanted to make this the night before Christmas then soaking it once is fine. So in a few minutes, you'll see the cake is gonna soak up everything. It's like a sponge. So the more you add to it, the more it's gonna soak and it's gonna get nice and moist. So I hope you all enjoyed this easy sorrel fruit cake recipe. It's so simple to put together and you can definitely do this the night before Christmas. So if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit that bell so you can see all the latest videos as soon as I upload them. And make sure you leave all your comments down below. I love reading your comments, so keep sending that. So one thing I forgot to mention is you can put this in a regular pan if you want. You can also use one of those butter cookie pans. 
So like those Danish cookies. So you don't have to throw those cookie pans away. You can keep them to bake your cakes in. And you can wrap these up and make them look really pretty and give them out as gifts for Christmas. That's what I'm doing. So I'm wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2018. I'm so happy and thankful for your continued support this year. And I'm looking forward to your continued support in the new year. So I hope you all have an amazing holiday season and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! Mmm, this tastes in real good. I could taste that sorrel in there and I just bit into one of those sorrel sepals and it was just a bursting of sorrel flavors. I think this is the only way I'm gonna make fruitcake now. The sorrel flavor is not too strong, but you could taste it in the background and it tastes in real good. So I can't wait for you guys to try out this recipe. And my cakes have been soaking for the past two days. I've been soaking it with the sorrel syrup, the spiced rum and the cherry brandy. So I'm still gonna soak it for the next few days until Christmas. So by the time Christmas reach, the cake might get you drunk. So I hope you all enjoy this recipe.